Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. I welcome you once again to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. We always try to bring you invigorating, interesting and life transforming information from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And today I have just a guest for you. But before I let you know who the guest is, please hit that subscribe button. It's very, very important that you do that. We need your support, guys. Um, Bonique Amona is the individual I have, uh, the C CEO and founder of Passport2. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Nice to be here. Okay. Give us a short intro. Um, my name is Bonnie Gamona, as he has alluded to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking to you straight in the <laughs> yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am a travel content creator mm -hmm. at first and doing influencer work in the travel and lifestyle space. Um, on a more formal basis, I'm an investment consultant in the financial services, of course. And why we're here today, I am a travel curator. Mm -hmm. We do experiential travel through Passport 2 experiences. Um, and yeah, so we are a boutique agency that creates picturesque, memorable, mm. one-of-a-kind experiences here locally and abroad. I like the word experiential because you used it earlier. Mm. How do you define it in the context of what you do? Um, I feel like experience is in the touch, in the feel, in the smell, it's in the senses, right? So in everything that we do, we know that we cater to all your senses. We cater to your, you know, even the, ins the inside sense of excitement, of awe, of wonder. That's what mm -hmm. we speak to. We will give you, we can give you mm. like you've never seen it before. Because okay. it's the experience that we give you. It's not necessarily the location. Okay. Share a little bit about your background educationally and otherwise. Um, I grew up mostly in South Africa. I did my high school and university in South Africa. I uh, was trained as an at uh, Rhodes University. Oh, Rhodes, okay. <laughs> Rhodes University. I was trained as an economist. I then went on to do my diploma, postgraduate diploma in business management, and then I was taken on to be an MBA graduate by 25, hmm. MBA in economics. Um, wow. So I came back with a with a heart for for business, and of course for 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 the financial services. Mm -hmm. So I got to I kind of a living mm -hmm. a nice merged bit of that right now. Okay. So uh, you're an economist. That's what I'm trained for. Okay. Currently just working in, in, in investment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the company Passport2. Mm. First, I think you have to uh, unpack the meaning. <laughs> mm. So um, my business partner and I, I started this business with Uya Puketo Um We are people that always had our passport in the bonnets of our car. We are always ready to go. COVID. <laughs> We're the type of people that if I say, we are poor, um, let's go to Joburg, let's go to, you know, wherever. He will say, it's my birthday, let's go to Kenya, let's go to Uganda. We were always passport in hand, right? Mm. Um, and then we thought, okay, we're going to start a business that um, speaks to travel and speaks to travel the way we do it. But because we are strategists at mind, or at heart rather, we wanted to have a name that can adapt to many situations. So you'll see when we did our Valentine's experience, we called it a passport to love. Mm -hmm. When we were taking people to Maum, we'll call it a trust, uh, passport to the Delta or passport to Nata. Mm -hmm. We just wanted a name that is playful. It makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So you, you ended up having your vocation um, coinciding with your vacation. <laughs> of course, if that's you know what, what we I mean. love to see. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And, and the business has been running for how long? It is turning two in September. We started it during the pandemic. Imagine so it's a starting child a, of COVID. a child of COVID, a travel business <laughs> <laughs> during restrictions. Yeah, it's quite a challenge, but but definitely something worthwhile. Yeah, just just how did it start? 
Um, as I mentioned, I'm a travel content creator. Mm. That means I make, you know, Instagram and Facebook social media content around what I like to do, travel, right? And that happens with my business partner as well. So we travel together quite often. And people are always just like, Can't mm. like, why are you leaving us behind? Mm. And we realized there actually is a market of people who want to experience the things that we experience in the way that we experience it, but mm. most importantly, with us. So we sat and we said, why don't we, why don't we just dare? Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how it started. And we started in September 2020. Okay. Day one or one day. I, I want you to help the listener understand that phraseology and mm. what it means. Um, day one or one day is something that was very important to me um, and to my business partner as well. We are people that dream and plan. We can, we can write the life out of a plan, okay? Mm. But we, we didn't do, you know? Um, we were always wondering about making it perfect. We'll launch this when this, we'll launch this when that. And eventually we just got to a point where we were like, okay, friend, we've been locked in our house for three months. What is going to happen? What would happen if you just did? So we just stopped thinking one day and we said, okay, today is day one. Let's go. Let's shoot from the hip. And, and we started this business off of, um, off of a dream, really. You got tired of paralysis analysis. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. Okay. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, yeah, so you just felt you were stuck in that thing. Mm. What how, how was the first trip like? Uh, can you take us to that first experience? So... As, as a business. The first trip for us, we had taken a four-day trip to Maung. Um, we had tried to figure out how we can do a common location in a unique way, which is what we really premise our business on. Mm. Um, uniquely giving you local experiences. Um, so we had decided, okay, let's take people to Maung, but how are we going to do it different? We're going to get chefs in the bush. We're going to get horses, horseback safaris, instead of doing it, you know, normally. You're going to get, you know, you're going to canoe down the channel on your own. You know, we're trying to figure out how you can do things differently. Um, but it was stressful, okay? I mm -hmm. think I slept maybe six hours over those four days <laughs> because you're showing them all these experiences a lot of the time we are, we cater sometimes for, this, for, the, um, for the guests as well because they like the food that we do. Mm. So you're working overtime and then in the evening they want to party and drink with you. Mm -hmm. And us being the hosts that, that we are are going to party and drink with you. It's a part of the you. package. Of course. <laughs> you're paying to be with me and you're going to get the full experience. Yeah. Um, so it was very exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, but it gave us lots of lessons. We learned to ask for help because we hadn't asked for help enough on that first experience. Um, we learned that there are people who are willing to support in terms of brands that are, that are seeing the quality in what we do and say, okay, fine, we'll pay for the food. We can mm. cover the, the, the transport, you know? Um, so we learned also pricing. Mm -hmm. That was a tough lesson for us, was learning pricing. You know, there's always those small things that creep up that you haven't accounted for, especially if you're as much of a perfectionist as we are. Um, we want to make sure that things are perfect for you, and that is quite expensive so yeah mm. there were quite a few lessons really I can see your Instagram um, you know following is massive <laughs> how did you get to such a massive following and what do you think people are intrigued by the most um, I think it's authenticity I am fully and truly myself and I'm showing you what I do you know I'm not staging anything I think people really like the travel because I can it's a very small village I can show you Kalakadi in, in, in a, such a beautiful way. I can show you Khaburoni in a beautiful way. So I think people are intrigued by, by our, our unique aesthetic that we put mm. towards um, lifestyle and travel. And, and one thing about your, your, your way of doing it is that there's interaction with animals a lot, including what are these little animals, red like Meerkats. A, meerkats. Yes. Yes. Tell me about the, your <laughs> friendship with meerkats. Meerkats are a very elusive type of animal. Um, we like to have people, you know, experience the animals very closely. That's something that's very close to our hearts. Mm. So we had, in our Nata experience, we had people do a meerkat visit. You see them on The Gods Must Be Crazy and all those mm. old school movies. Mm. You just have a walk. You get to hear about how they forage, how they, um, how they kind of... Um, habituate in that spot particular space mm. and then we got our guests to 
run around and just lie down, right? Mm -hmm. They just got to lie down in a, a special space. And we had, some of the meerkats are very inquisitive. They mm -hmm. use you as a, um, as a stepping stone for yeah. what's, what's going happening? on over there. Yeah. So some of them got those beautiful experiences, that beautiful picture. So they're picture. a bit fearless. They, I don't know if they're fearless or they're a little bit daft because mm. they don't notice that this is a person. They're just merely using you as something to climb on. Or if you don't move. Yes. If okay. you move, then they will run away. Okay. So you just have to. So we try to do animal experiences quite a bit. As mm. I said, the horseback safaris, the elephant sanctuaries and all of that. We try to mm. really get you close to nature. Global strain for local gain. Um, I like your choice of phrase because that, that's... <laughs> That's, uh, that's poetic. Thank you. Global strain for local gain. Um, by that, I meant we did not look at what travel agencies are doing here. We looked at what travel agencies are doing across the globe and how we can use that or leverage the quality that they use to kind of grow local travel. As you saw during COVID, there was no more Kya Deb and Kya Cape Town and Kya Gai Gai Gai. People were, I guess, not even forced but inspired to see Botswana. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that when they see Botswana, they see the best of Botswana and Botswana in the best way. Um, so that is with the quality, that's with the luxury, special touches that we bring in. Um, I didn't want it to be any typical Botswana agency. Mm -hmm. But you, you're not just limited to Botswana. You go to the Seychelles, you go to the, uh, you know, one place that has gotten very popular is Zanzibar, mm. the Maldives, yeah. all those places. So what we can do, um, we also function as a, um, an agency, right? So we can, if you want to go to Zanzibar, we can plan an itinerary for you for Zanzibar. If you want to go to Maldives, wherever it is that you want to go, we can do that for you. Just as you would at, at you know, I'm not going to name names, mm. at any other travel agency. The, that we can do for you and we've, you know, got, of course got, you know, agent rates and all of that. Mm. But of course what we really want people to focus on is seeing Botswana. Yes. Right now we're, we were focusing on getting Botswana to see Botswana. But I'm really hoping that this year brings us a lot of international visits to come and see Botswana um, in a way that is not as expensive as, um, as it's been advertised before. Yeah, because normally it's US dollar based and sometimes you pay in foreign accounts. Mm. Yeah, so you are trying to localize it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten, gotten into partnerships with local lodges, you know, lodges like mine, for instance, Luxury Wild Inn? Have you approached uh, similar size lodges? Mine is nine, nine, uh, nine room. That's the perfect that size for us. Mm. We have struggled to find lodges. Um, I think there's a, there's a bit of an issue with finding, with putting yourself online. So we even, we've had trips around Gabs, mm. um, not in Khaburuni, of course, but in the surrounding areas because we want to have that bush experience. But we've struggled with finding, with finding places. So if you are to, please, after this, share your lodges. Yeah, I'm going to share and them. Also then we have one in Gabs called, uh, uh, you know, Kosikhadi uh, Bed and Breakfast. Mm. And we have one in Maung called Luxury Wild Inn. No. Uh, the the, the Khaburuni one is six rooms. Mm. The, the Maung one is nine rooms. No, so. we'll definitely have a look at that. Yeah. We have a look at that most certain because we've been trying to, we, we of course want to, it's not even bias, it's, it's a choice. We want to support Batswana. Mm -hmm. um, and we look tirelessly for spaces that of course match the, the price point that people are paying for. Because people want to get that super luxury feel. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we um, experience some places, we usually go there ourselves and spend a night there and see if this is the quality that I can say I can give to, to clients. So I definitely, mm -hmm. I'd love to see your place as well. Okay, let's talk about COVID, um, both the positives and the negatives. How, what impact did it have in you personally and then in your business? Um, personally, as someone who loves to go around, it gave me, I, was, I had cabin fever. Mm. I had real cabin fever, not being able to on a random weekend just say, let's drive out to Maung or mm. Are Tabong, Are Kawa for argument's sake. Mm. Um, like my wife is going to Kawa right now. Really? There's, there's a lot happening in Kawa. <laughs> I couldn't no, go, unfortunately, because I had to meet you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Next time we've got a home in Tabong, you, you can come and stay there. Yeah. Um, so how it affected me personally was just the cabin fever. And of course, um, work-wise, it was very hectic. But business-wise... It gave us time to strategize and start the business. 
but it also had the negative effects of, hey, you will find the next day or the day before you have to travel, there's all sorts of permits and, you know, everything's revoked and we've had to cancel a trip before. Mm. I think it was our Easter trip 2021 that was painful because we, we, we cancelled a day before. Yeah, and you had already paid. We'd already book. paid and we paid everyone back. We paid all our guests Hopefully fully. Hopefully we were reimbursed as we well. We were not fully reimbursed, but mm -hmm. we wanted because we're starting our business. Mm -hmm. We don't want you. Mm. I get to know when you make, when the situation like that, people are quick to say, hey, well, I wanted a local business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we knew that. And, and luckily those are relationships that we've built. Those same clients had come back because they saw how we treated them they've come back for other trips um, mm -hmm. going forward. So that was really the, the issue, was the uncertainty around travel restrictions with COVID. Yeah. Never negotiate your worth. Um, people think, you'll hear other gurus say, you negotiate everything. But you saying, you're here to tell us we should never negotiate your worth. Never what do you mean and why? Your worth. Um, what I mean is that you know the work the quality, the inputs that have gone into every little thing you're doing, even if it's not a travel experience, in your own special spaces. Um, you know what you've put in. Don't let anyone cheap you out, you know? Um, you'll even find, if it means being without work for some time. Even if it means being without work. It's difficult. How do you put food on the table? <laughs> in the you'll, find, you'll find another way. Mm -hmm. um, how we ended up doing that, I'll show you. When we knew that we wanted to continue doing experiences, but um, people were saying, well, okay, this certain amount for this experience is, it's, you know, people have lost their jobs, it's, it's a bit expensive right now. Mm -hmm. We adapted. We then did a passport to soiree. So we took them out to, to Audi, had them do horseback safaris, had them have spa day and, you know, a full day of gourmet food. We adapted. Mm -hmm. But we, what, we want, what we were not going to do is give you a trip for half the price and end up losing money. Because mm -hmm. that's one thing we've done is we have bled money, mm -hmm. but all for, all for the good of, we know that this is going to pay back mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, it's important to say that. I'm reminded of what Warren Buffett, uh, his, his golden rule, he says, never ever lose money. Mm -hmm. And rule number two, he says that two rules. One mm -hmm. is never ever lose money. And rule number two, Refer to rule number one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So never lose money. Yeah. Okay. Um. So 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 basically, are you encouraging people to adopt a take it or leave it attitude? No, I think you adapt. Mm. So you don't. If you're going to offer me a handshake mm. for five pula, mm -hmm. and you come or I come and I say no, I want it for for three pula. I'll say if you have three pula, I'll give you three fingers. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. You adapt. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, you don't compromise on, on the price of something, especially because of a lot of the times our margins are so low that even if Anka hokes like a hundred pula, I'm then in the red. Yeah. So, so yeah. Step back and strategize. Step back and strategize is where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, we had grown, After two years. Yeah. Mm. After two years, you get to a point where um, you're growing, and there's growing interest in that. Um, but you find that there are mistakes that you make along the way. Instead mm. of you know pushing on, pushing on, pushing on, mm. you might burn the future prospects that you have by pushing on for the sake of an extra bula. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a point where you're like, step back and have a look and say, these are the issues that we've had. Um, this is how we can mitigate against that. Um, and take time off. Um, if you love what you do, you, you never want to see it fail. So did you take time off from uh, Passport 2 and then you remained on the influencer side? Um, yes, um, we took a step back from Passport 2. Not really a step back per se, because we're still doing, as you say, when you come and you say you want to go to the Delta, we can still book you into the Delta. We still had those clients coming in and out. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the group experiences that we are known for, mm -hmm. we stepped back a bit from that because we wanted to make sure that we can do them at the quality that we want without, of course, um, you know, miscalculating step one, Yaka Warren Buffett. Mm. Um, so we had to step back and say, okay, Boniluya, what is it that you guys want? How are you going to go about this in a manner that's going to be beneficial for you in the long term? Of mm -hmm. course, we want to scale the business. Um, so we had to step back and, and strategize how we grow. How difficult is it to penetrate to, into the international market, the international tourism market, the one that is really the high-end luxury one? 
Um, I think it was made difficult by COVID. And because I, why I say that is because a lot of the time, um, travel and destination agents um, go to expos, go to um, fairs, travel, all, all those type of travel gatherings. And because there was COVID, you don't really get to, to attend those things. You don't get to be known, especially when you start the business during COVID. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit difficult in that, in that end. But generally, I think we are, we are well on our way. I just want us to, as in our strategizing phase, mm -hmm. make sure that we include um, that penetration strategy as, as part of our company. I mean, breaking into the kind of market that has these big companies, some of them publicly listed, I can't mention names, mm -hmm. where money is exchanged even before it, you, you touch, you, touch uh, you know, you land in, 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 in Maung Airport. Mm -hmm. How does one go through that? Well, you partner with them. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of something we had wanted to do in July was a Makari uh, Kari Pan sleep out. Mm -hmm. Beautiful experience, but you're not going to spend three nights on the pans. It's uncomfortable, it's hot, and you need to go back and take a shower at a luxury lodge. So we then bridge um, the relationships with some of those big listed lodges. Bo Desert and Delta, Bo Belmont Safaris, Bo Wilderness Safaris. Mm -hmm. We then say, okay, if wilderness is within our, within our price point, um, let us spend two nights at a wilderness camp and one night in the pans. And that's how we get to, to, to work with them mm -hmm. because we also get to bring a different demographic to them. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they always, you know, of course, because we're a local company, they will give us um, local rates. Doesn't mean it's cheap, mm. but it's, it's not the same rates that you would get yeah, as because an international I, I hear person. some of the places you mentioned, you can get up to 4,000 a night, US dollars. Yeah. So maybe but, you get 4,000 in Pula, maybe. Yes, that's mm. usually around, you, the cheapest you might find maybe is like a 3,000, 3.5. Per night. Yeah. And not many of Botswana can afford that, but there are a few who yeah. can. Yeah, there, there, are, there are some who can, um, which is part of our strategize, um, our strategize plans, mm. is that if I then let you know ahead of time, a year ahead of time, mm -hmm. we're going to... Camp Kalahari, which is a natural selection camp, you have got all six months or all the whole year, to however budget. long, eh, mm. to budget. Some of us who or whatever, mm. we can easily just be like, hey, get us a visa my car next month, let's go. Mm, mm. So, but we want to be able to give everyone a chance at, at experiencing. So we want to be able to, to let people know ahead of time yeah. and, and give them a chance to, to plan. I sense that you're very familiar with exotic locations in Botswana that people may not know. Um, do you want to share some of the, the gems that are out there that people may not know about, which, which you've experienced? Um, my favorite experience was actually my first Delta experience was at Eagle Island Lodge. Mm. Um, it's a Belmont Safaris camp. Mm. Beautiful. Like picture, you know, you've got, it looks, it's a tent, but it does not feel at all like a tent. They've got beautiful big baths. They've got a plunge pool there for you. If you wake up early enough and you open your curtain, you can find an elephant drinking out of your plunge pool. <laughs> it's just a beautiful experience. Mm. So there's those Belmont camps. There's camps that belong to natural selection. Of course, there's Jao Camp, um, which is a wilderness camp that is on my bucket list. If anybody mm. works there, <laughs> put me on. <laughs> Um, but there's those type of experiences, and I've found that in my own personal space, if I go to a Kwai Ledwood camp, there's someone, yes, that can't afford to do that right now, but we have an older demographic. I have quite a bit of an older demographic that can afford, that end up going to those spaces, which is why we, we like to use what we call like influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. So we then we approach certain lodges and say, can we come and experience your lodge? It's very difficult. Sometimes they'll offer you like a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll say, okay, come, you can come. And we I want... If you show them your portfolio, content. they'll be more than... It's glad. difficult. Yeah. I, I was on the way there. Mm. Um, my business partner is a brilliant writer. So sometimes we'll go to that camp and he will, you know, write them in one of the airport in-flight mm -hmm. magazines and whatever. So there's a benefit for them. It's not just a holiday. Mm -hmm. You will see I'll travel for a three-night stay with Dibeke Zetri. Okay. Because we want to give them beautiful content and options. So though they're those destinations. I will definitely be profiling quite a lot of them on our Passport to page. So I encourage everyone to follow us. 
Mm-hmm. Um, at Passport. What about the other less known places? Maybe Todilo Hills, Matiens, uh, what food, whatever. Yes, yes, those. yes. What about those? Um, those places I explore on weekends with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, the most recent one we had been to, we've been to both Tamara Pottery, which I always encourage. It's such a beautiful experience. Tell us about that one. Tamara Pottery, um, you get to learn how to make your own pottery, of course. Um, those ladies have been working there for years. And they're so passionate, right? Mm. So when COVID hit, we couldn't go very far. We wanted to, you know, those people have been are used to working with tips from the UK and the US. Mm-hmm. And now there's nothing. So we're just like, what are the things that we can do locally to try and reinvigorate the market? We tried to do, there's one outside in Odi, Odi Weavers. There's uh, Matilo, uh, what, Matieng's Footprints yeah. we've been to. Um, there's Mohobane Dam. Even on your own personal ex- um, yeah. expedition, you can go and have a picnic out in Mohobane Dam. There's, there's quite a bit to do around here. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do is we'll find you a location and, and turn it into an experience. So even if someone cannot afford your rates, you're mm-hmm. able to actually guide people let's try this out try this out yes okay so it's it's but that's just on a service of saying okay you can go to matien's footprints you can go to whatever place mm. um but if you want it in a in in a, in a if you want a passport to experience mm. um you might have to to set aside a little bit of money for that yeah government has been talking very strongly i think hard tab and to some extent um, a few other organizations uh, parastatals have been pushing hard for Botswana to really break through in the tourism industry. Um, are there some uh, green shoots? Are there some signs that we are breaking through? Uh, uh, can we use people like you as an example? We're trying. Um, I think there's still, there's still a bit of a challenge because, of course, when you start this type of thing, it's the same challenge that any other business would have. It's a capital issue. Okay. So even, even getting a tourism license in itself is X amount of money. And when you're starting, let's say it's 10,000 pula. When you're starting, that 10,000 pula will go into your banners. It will go into the marketing that you get into. It will go into Hailo Horgiri T-shirt or whatever. So there's, there's challenges like that. But I do think that there's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Botswana are really getting interested in Botswana. Mm-hmm. And BTO is also really trying to push um, interest in Botswana, which is something that mm-hmm. is helping us quite a bit. Yeah. And of course, there's at the same time an effort to to go continental with uh, things like the Africa Free Trade Agreement mm. or Free Trade Area. Yeah. I wonder whether you see any low hanging fruit there in terms of opportunities. Not as yet. Not mm. as yet. Um, sometimes you'll find with those kind of treaty agreements that um, it's easier for longer established businesses um, because a lot of these things are relationship built, which is what we're trying to do now: is building relationships. So that we can then go and say, okay, in this agreement, where do we go to start? You know, a lot of the time you have these big things that are publicized in the press and the, the lay Motswana doesn't even know for how does it impact their own business. Mm. Um, so really it's just about us proactively trying to figure out where do we go, which door do we, do we knock on? Because mm. um, as you said, people are more willing, but we just don't know to knock on that particular door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, reset your resourcing. Um, Let's unpack that one. Mm -hmm. Reset your resourcing. Um, As a startup um, that is run by the founders, it is extremely difficult to do everything and be everything to everyone, um, which kind of limits your growth. So, and I don't know if you're also, if you've experienced this, um, but I feel like Botswana has a a resourcing, human resource crisis, really. Um, Awesome. We are in a space where your business cannot grow if you don't have more people. You can't hire more people because your business hasn't grown. And then fine, you then take the plunge and say, let me hire Mr. Mohobo. Get la muduela before any work is done because we are investing in the passion, right? And then two months down the line, you know, there's, there's no, you can never, it's not you can never, it's, you, it's hard to find someone with the same heart and passion for your business as you do. Mm. So it's usually churning people in and out, and that is not always the most ideal situation. Um, so I, I encourage startups to, to really invest in, in, in HR consultants and hire people based on their competencies and their aptitude, 
not just hore of course we have to help our people there's mm. there's peace shops that we put our own family in mm. um, but you always have to look to interview at, yeah. them thoroughly yes and understand that your resources are really all you've got to grow your business so in the context of past uh, passport to mm. what are you doing there um, part of our, our reset um, agenda, I guess mm. we can call it. Yeah. Um, Piggybacking on uh, President Masir. Yes. Masis. Um, mm-hmm. So part of our reset agenda was really to, to decide, Hore, okay, let's add more resources to the team. Let us spend a certain amount of time interviewing people um, with, uh, in conjunction with local HR startups mm-hmm. so that we find the right people and then we grow together. And we don't have problems with, with, an, with an equity share type of uh, model once we see Horoke. In other words, you are prepared to invite uh, funders in and, and to most, approach yeah. even venture capitalists or most angel certainly, investors. Yeah. So we definitely want to, to do that because we have, we have such crazy dreams for this mm. business, mm. such crazy dreams um, that cannot be done just off of um, our own, you know, our time and our own resources, financial resources. Um, sometimes there's expertise that you can get from someone else and most times there's money that you need to be able to realize these dreams that we have for this, mm. for this entity. Then maybe you should approach the likes of uh, Angel Network Baton. How do we go about, about well, that? Well, talk to me after this because um, yeah. I'm one of the founder, founding members mm. of that. It's, uh, it's, it's a group of uh, you know, investors, yeah. you know, some of them semi-retired, they have a little bit of liquidity. Mm. that they can put in if, uh, if your business is investable or if it's primed for, for scaling, for growth, yeah. which I, I trust no, I'm yours. Excited. Is, mm. I'm sure people are watching here and they will see a year later what Angel Network Botswana has done with Passport <laughs> 2. Well, a lot to look forward to there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me ask you about resilience and persistence. Um, in your uh, relatively short life as an entrepreneur, mm. how important has, have, have those qualities been? The quality of resilience, the quality of persistence, and how did you apply them? Yeah. I, think, I think that's the only thing that we've had to hold on to, is persistence and resilience. Mm. Um, as we said, because it's a bit more of a pricier um, trip that we're putting out there, we know that sometimes people are not going to, we're not going to reach the numbers. Mm. And sometimes you've priced it, let's say it's a trip at 12,000 pula. You've priced it at 12,000 pula knowing that you'll get eight people. And you know that, okay, it's two days to the trip now, you've only got five. If you don't get that three, do you cancel? Do you go ahead? Do you? And we've had to decide that, okay, we're going to persist. We're going to, you know, we're going to go on radio. We're going to go on TV. We have to, uh, persistence really has to do with with also agility, figuring out how to get out of this mess, or, or if you should, in fact, trudge through the trenches. Mm. So it really has been, especially in the pricing and in the, in the uptake mm-hmm. bit of it, quite um, a, a, a big lesson that we've learned, mm. is to hold on. Yeah. And you obviously would encourage the, the viewers to do the same. Yeah. Mm. And then don't give up too easily. Yeah. Of course, as we said, we don't want you to, to, to not start but they're, they're, it's very easy to, to quit. Okay. Now, time for the crystal ball question. What, what I mean by this is really, if you, if you had a crystal ball and were looking forward to looking into the future, mm-hmm. 10, 15 years down the line, what sort of future do you see for both uh, Boine Kamona as an influencer and as Passport 2 as a business? Um... For myself as an influencer, for me, it's just something that I enjoy doing, creating content. Of course, I like being able to earn money off of doing stuff that I love already, which is travel. Um, but I think what I want to answer is more in terms of the crystal ball for Passport 2. I see it as a multinational in the next five years, mainly in Southern Africa, um, exploring Southern African destinations but not only for individual and group travel. I see it as the go-to company for, com- for corporate retreats um, and stuff um, centered in wellness. Um, I see it as, you know, at all the local schools, if they're looking for a, a beautifully curated trip for their, for their um, you know, there's like standard five or standard seven trips or your form five trip, they must know, okay, every single year, 
for Form 5, they book a passport to experience. I see it as that type of entity where it speaks before I walk in. I don't want to walk in and I'm trying to flip it. Yes, right now yes. when I walk into a room, you see Passport 2. Yeah. I want Passport 2 to walk ahead of me. That way you don't associate me with the business. The business is a brand on its own. That's my wow. dream and, for And do you see the influencer aspect going to the point where Gucci and um, Yves Saint Laurent <laughs> and Pierre Cardin I would love you, that. Approach you to, to show off their products. Yeah, I would love that. I've done quite a few brands locally mm. and, and mostly South African brands, mm. um, which I enjoy. I obviously enjoy more of the uh, lifestyle stuff as well, which is the, the lodges, the, um, you know, the, the clothing brands. Mm. Um, I love doing that. I just haven't, to be honest, I haven't been giving it too much attention. Um, my followers complain all the time because they say, "Yeah." Mm. But, so I've been trying to post a little bit more, mm -hmm. but that's also because we are multifaceted. So I'm also trying to, you know, make my way in corporate. Mm. I want to be the, you know, the head of retail. That's what is also your target? A, Do you want to get to hundred thousand, to half a million? In terms of followers, yes. I've never really thought about it like that. I think I'm more of a money type of person. I am okay with 10,000 because I knew that I just well, hit 10,000 now. Yeah, I know you're over 10,000. But even before I hit 10,000, I was making more money than people with 25,000. Mm -hmm. So it was never about the numbers for me because I've always worked with brands that understand quality mm -hmm. and impact outside of... So what is the trick? How, how does one get over the obsession with numbers and focus on quality? How, did, how do you... I Do think because I've worked as a brand strategist for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, I know what to look for when I pick an influencer. So I know what to do as an influencer in terms of creating content that is authentic, that is consistent, which is what my followers are asking for. Mm -hmm. um, but that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You don't just haphazardly post everything. Does it require one to, to get the best equipment and the best cameraman out there? Or what does it um, take? I always say that, you know, start where you are, but also it's very important. Invest in what you do. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see, for instance, when I do like a TikTok video, I've gone and I've bought ring lights. I've, if I go to an event, I would hire young uh, makeup artists and stuff. It's, it's costly, but then the quality of work that you get will bring in money that will pay off. Mm, That's, eventually. Yeah. Okay. So and in terms of the, the various platforms, which one do you think is ideal for, for influencers? I'm, I, I mean, going beyond Instagram, mm -hmm. is there any ones that you see coming up where people may not, may tend to overlook perhaps? Mm. I'm currently obsessed with TikTok mm. um, because it's, it's quick, you know? And there's so much content coming in that you're not limited, right? So Instagram, for example, if you post on Instagram, it's only going to be seen by the 10,000 people that follow me, and not even all of them because of the algorithm and the way it works. Mm. But on TikTok, you don't even have to follow me. If you scroll through, you're going to find my content. You know, so if, if someone that likes, if someone that you follow, you know, likes my content, it's likely going to appear on your, on your feed. Mm -hmm. So that is a space that really speaks to quality or relatability, irrespective of are you a favorite? Are you known? Are you not known? It's, it's just a space that speaks to, yeah. to, to relatability. Yes, so I was asking if there are any others like Snapchats and um, you know, even LinkedIn or Twitter. No, I think, I think right now, maybe in two or three years, there will be another, another platform. But right now, people are still you know, falling off of Instagram, really. Because, you know, right now we're, I think, staying at home for how, forever long, mm. we realize, for the, you know what, it's, it's okay, fine. Bonnie's posted a nice picture, but like, and what? Mm. So right now, TikTok is a platform where you can see our personality. Mm -hmm. You can get to hear, like, I know my followers like to hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So if I do TikTok videos and I have a voiceover, I can get 30,000 views on that thing. If yeah. I do it where it's just pictures... They don't care for that. Yeah. So you're able to show your personality in, on different platforms in a different way. Somebody watching this who's maybe considering becoming an influencer is just maybe asking themselves, exactly how do you make Zaga? How do you make money out of this? <laughs> how, how is the money angle? Can you help us? Um, what I would always encourage is that you start with your own resources, right? So you don't expect 
um, Bonnie, who is the marketing manager of St. Louis, mm, for instance, yeah. Um, for, for example, mm. to want to put money in you without having seen what you do. So, start posting it, you know, post it more often, you know, create that type of content. Then you go and you knock on those doors because what are they going to say? They were not going to beat you. They will mm. just say no. So I definitely always encourage people to just go and knock on that door. Start mm. where you are. And then knock on the doors. There's no, there's no shame in, in, in trying. Mm. Okay, one question I need to, to... No, then when does the money come? Um, sometimes people want campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, that's generally how brands work are in phases of campaigns. So let's say, as we're using... I'll use St. Louis because it's a local brand um, that I see doing very well. They've got a great agency that's doing very well for them. Um, they will, you'll go to either the agency or the, the brand and you say, okay, this is, what I, this is what I want to do for you. Can I do this? Or they will come to you after you've already put yourself forward and say, we're starting a campaign here, Independence. Um, this is how much we're paying for it. We want four budget. posts. Yeah, we want four posts. We want to do, you know, on this platform or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how it would usually go. I would always say, don't necessarily stick to those people's budgets. Price at your worth. Mm. Because... Of course, everyone's a business. Mm. So if they can get you for less than you're worth, even better for them. Mm. Um, but stand your ground in those certain spaces. So that you're not impoverished in the process. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What did you say was one of the biggest setbacks you've had um, in, in your entrepreneurial life? And how did you, what did you do to overcome it? Um, my biggest setback for both of us Mm. was you the fact partner. that me and my partner is that we, we both have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And we are very, very committed to those jobs. Um, we did not allocate enough time to, to run a full-fledged agency. So then we started to have specific, specific things where we say, okay, on Mondays, at this time and this time, we're going to have meetings. We had to start bringing in structure. I think structure is what has saved us from, from mm -hmm. the time trap. Okay. Um, that's how we overcame that. But other than that, it was just... It I've was heard just people refer to jobs as golden handcuffs. Could these be golden handcuffs? I They're so beautiful. You're, you're, you're distracted by the golden right. part. <laughs> no, I understand why people would say that. Um, but, and, and it's true in mm. certain instances. Um, because you get too comfortable because um, you know fine if it doesn't work out then it's still okay like I've got bread mm. um, but for me because I don't because I like what I do I, I enjoy my professional um, work and I feel like I'll grow very well in that space I just have to be strict with myself and say Bunny you do up to this much and then after this time you have to dedicate if you're going to now sleep at 2 mm. sleep at 2 working on your itinerary for your trip. Mm. Um, it's about, you know, discipline and, okay. and, and structure. Okay. Mm. All right. This is the time now for you to hit me with a question. Do you have one for me? Um, I think a question I could ask is, having spoken about resourcing being a difficult thing for many startups in Botswana, how did you go about making sure that you find the right fit in terms of people that you bring into your team? trial and error to be honest. Um, I didn't have a clue at the beginning but I was lucky enough to know that um, targets are very important. So people who didn't meet the target tend to fall off very quickly. So I started, we started literally with 100 bulla in terms of you know the amount we put in the account mm. and then we worked like crazy you know we worked <laughs> long hours six o'clock in the morning leaving at 11 o'clock at night mm. doing this for a stretch of a decade and a half, you know, that's that's the sort of work ethic we developed. Mm -hmm. And eventually we attracted people with similar uh, work ethic, mm -hmm. with a similar approach. So it has been mostly trial and error. Even now, we still have the difficult and embarrassing experience of having to sit down with some people and say, look, my friend, you're not, you're not <laughs> pulling your socks. You're not, yeah. it's not working out. Sometimes you help the person because that way, you guide them to look for something that that that, that ignites uh, their passion. Mm. So without the passion, people will just turn up and uh, they look for 
for the salary. Mm. So, so it's the job of a CEO and, and like you mentioned, an HR department mm. to keep trying to see who stays on the bus, who gets off mm. the bus, that sort of thing. So yeah. it's never really, it's not a science, it's mm. more like an art, but mm. it's an ongoing ongoing effort yeah no, so I, hear you. I hope that answers your question definitely yeah. it's something that i'm i'm learning i'm trying to learn very well mm. to stop of course you need to lead with the heart mm. like lead with the heart but of course you know you have to let the mind step over at some stage absolutely absolutely yeah. but thank you for that no. answer okay all right i want you to take a look at that uh, camera over there and have um, final parting words of wisdom, of encouragement, mm. uh, some take-home message for, for the viewer, as it were. Okay. Um, I guess in my final parting short, I will say dream. Um, dream big, um, dream audaciously, but of course you have to do. I think if there's anything that I want to leave everybody here with is that we want to see um, your, your, your love in your verb, you know, your, your love is a doing word, as we say, you want to see you work um, and never give up. Of course, there are times to stop and strategize and, you know, to reset and all of those beautiful, catchy words, but you have to get up and work. That is it. Okay. I can't wait for you guys to follow Passport 2 and most importantly, join our trips. Okay. Yeah. You have to be specific as to where they can get hold of you in terms of where you're available on social media and elsewhere, contact details, everything. Can you share those? Perfect. Um, our number, Passport 2 number, is 74008515. Um, and then you can find us on social media at Passport 2, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, we are mostly active on Instagram, but of course we've got our WhatsApp line that's live, so you can reach out to us at any given time. Okay. And then uh, the influencer aspect? Um, on the influencer aspect, please follow my business partner on Nde underscore Uyapo. It's Nde Uyapo. His name is Uyapo Ketoketsui. And myself, um, you can find me on all platforms under Herero Rocher. It's Herero Rocher. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You've been a wonderful guest. You've done a good job. Thank you. Thank you.